Ah, oh, hello there, welcome. Thank you for pressing the play button. This video is going to be an introduction video to a whole series of tutorials that I'm going to put on YouTube, which will be all about, well, learning the notes on one of these instruments. This is a DG Melodeon or a DG Diatonic Accordion, if you want to give it its full official title. Um, we'll cover which notes which, give it their proper musical names. We'll talk about how they relate to each other and perhaps cover a little bit of uh, basic musical theory along the way just to help make sense of it all. So, why would we need a video for this? If you've played other instruments in the past, you may have found that learning the notes was fairly straightforward and logical. Um, some things are certainly like that. However, on one of these, yeah, there is a logic to it, but when you're first learning about them, it can seem very far from that. Um, it's quite confusing the way that the notes are assigned and, and actually learning what they all are is actually quite a big job. Um, as such, this will be a fair few number of videos to cover it all. Um, <clears throat> it's possible to play one of these instruments without ever learning any of the notes. You just find a position and play it and enjoy it for what it is and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you want to take your playing further and perhaps get more advanced in what you're doing with it, it's going to certainly help that you know how it all works. And certainly knowing the names of the notes is going to go some way towards that. So, first of all, perhaps we need to speak a little bit more about what this really is. Okay then, so what's this DG Melodeon or DG Diatonic Accordion that we're talking about here? So just to clarify, it's well, it's one of these. It's a type of accordion, a free reed instrument with bellows in the middle and two end bits that have buttons. We've got some buttons this side as well that when you press them and you squeeze you get some notes and so on. I think you already knew that. And um, so, what do we need to know about this? And what do we need to know for the course? Well, this is a DG instrument, a fairly standard um, format for one as well. Um, the, you can see on this side, we've got two rows of buttons. And the outer row, these buttons um, will give you the notes that you need for a D major scale. And the buttons on the inner row, those are going to give you, for the most part, the notes that you need for a G major scale. If you don't understand D major and G major scales and what that means, don't worry about that for now, it's, it's fine. What you do need to know is if your instrument that you have, and I presume you have one, um, is it got a D row and a G row like this on it? If it has, then you're good. It's, the tutorial is going to be useful for you. Um, if you've got extra rows, if you've got a, a middle one, or half a row or a full one down there with all sorts of stuff in, or if you have one on the outside with um, maybe A major notes or something along those lines, you can still do the course because as long as you've got the D and the G, you're good. Um, if you have an instrument that's in different keys totally to this, if you have one which is in C on the outside and F on the inside, or um, G on the outside and C on the inside, or there's various different ones you can get. In theory, you can still get something from this course, but what you'll need to do is transpose all the names of the notes that I'm talking about onto notes that are going to fit your instrument. If you're clever, you may be able to do that okay, but I think for this course, that's gonna get confusing very quickly. So you're welcome to try, um, but I think it might make things difficult if you're doing that. <coughs> now, there are some instruments that look like this that are actually set up very differently. In particular, the instruments that are played 
or used for Irish music, um, they look the same, but they have keys that, well, you might have a, a B row and a C row or a, a C sharp row and a D row in the middle, things like that. If you've got that sort of instrument, this course, these videos aren't going to help you really much at all. You'll need to go and find out elsewhere how to work those. Um, there's also instruments that have got three rows and one of them's a B and one of them is a C and then the other one's a C sharp row and they have loads of little buttons on this side and yet this video isn't going to help you on those either really you need to look elsewhere so if you've got some form of dg instrument yep you're good otherwise have watch it if you like but i think you might struggle to get too much out of this Okay then, right, we now know about the instrument. Uh, one other thing I need to add though is that for this course I won't be referring to musical notation. Um, you may know that as the dots or the tadpoles or you've seen it before, the, the lines and the dots and all that stuff. Not all melodeon players, not all folk musicians like to use that. Personally I think it's very worthwhile to learn, but as I want the videos to appeal to as wide an audience as possible, I'm not going to assume that you know how to use that, so there'll be no more mention of that. However, trying to learn about the instrument just on its own, without any reference to anything, is, I feel, quite a difficult thing. So there's one thing that I would suggest that you sort out and and get ready before we start that's going to help you a great deal and that is well one of these well actually not specifically one of these this is a melodica one of these sort of school instruments you play when you blow down and get a note um, but anything with a piano keyboard on it it could be a piano an organ a synthesizer uh, a child's toy, it could be, well, one of these, a piano accordion. Um, it could be even just an app on your tablet or even on your phone. As long as it works like a keyboard and gives you the right notes, um, that's going to be really, really helpful. And I'm going to be using this through the uh, following videos to help put some context into what we're doing. So if you've got something like this, I would suggest yes using it and just getting a feel for it you don't have to be able to play it you don't have to be a pianist all you need to do is just to know where the notes are and i'll go go through that as we go along okay then so we've got our instrument our dg diatonic accordion our melodeon um that's all ready to go we've also got a piano type keyboard to use for reference um, but there's one last thing I want to mention before we get into the course proper and that is well how are you going to use these videos um, you could if you wanted to just watch them all end to end straight through it'd be quite a long watch I think and it might get a bit confusing and overwhelming if you do that but you're welcome to if you like um, what I'd suggest instead though, is perhaps taking it very, very slowly. Start out with the first one and just stick with it until you've really got the notes of the um, and the buttons ingrained in your head so that you don't have to figure them out. You don't have to think about it. You, you just know that this button, that's a G or whatever. Um, that's where you want to get to really. You don't want to be having to figure out what things are you should just want to be able to know it straight away and that takes time so don't rush it don't be surprised if it takes a, a, a day or two to get familiar with the first video or, or a week or however long it takes it doesn't matter it's your own learning curve as long as you're learning and, and developing it doesn't matter how long it takes so don't rush it um, so yeah that's the idea Take it slowly, go through a bit of a time, and it will start to make sense. 
And also, when you learn something, then go back to your playing if you're already able to play and think about how what you've learnt applies to the tunes you already know. So if you now know that a, a button is a G or an A, then yeah, think about it when you're playing and that's going to help cement it in your mind of, of what's going on. So with that said, I think it's probably time to um, jump to the next video and actually get started for real. Thanks for watching.